Hi, this is Jim Gibson. Thank you for coming to my channel today. Very much appreciate it. And today I'm going to be talking about a uh, tool that's called butt sets. And I have two butt sets here, one from really old butt set and one fairly modern butt set. Now, I don't know where the term butt set came into um, use, but I, I do believe it is uh, used universally throughout the United States at least. And maybe it's because these systems are used to butt into a line, into a telephone line, an analog telephone line. Not a digital, it's not a VoIP system. You don't use this on VoIP phones. You know, uh, VoIP standing for voice over IP. Uh, that is a digital system. This, these systems here, these two old and new, uh, are used for um, uh, analog lines. So telephones that would come into... Uh, into systems or into buildings, things like that. Now, you know, a lot of the big systems are still analog, to be honest with you. They're not digital. They're still analog. There's a lot of analog phones out there getting less and less and less, especially in the business world uh, where, um, you know, you don't have uh, the luxury sometimes of getting digital lines and setting up with a digital system. Uh, most people, though, are moving towards the IP systems, the voice over IP, and maybe I'll do a class on uh, voice over IP in the future, how it works, what you need to be concerned about, how to set up your routers and switches so that they actually work really well. But today we're going to be talking about butt sets. Now, a little bit of the path, a little bit of the history here. Okay, so uh, this butt set, this is mine. Uh, I use this many times. These things were very expensive when you were uh, purchased many, many years ago, uh, four to $600. And this is a fantastic butt set. This is heavy plastic. It's not going to break. You probably run over it with your truck and it wouldn't break. Of course, I had a dial pad there right here. And um, also this little switch here, which is tone dial or pulse dial. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. Please bear with me here. I'm leaning over behind the camera can't always see exactly what's going on. But anyway, tone dial, pulse dial. And then what you would do is you would take these two uh, things, these two um, alligator clamps, and you would attach them uh, in the phone room to different lines, and you'd t test to see if there's dial tone there uh, or if there's a problem or things like that. Uh, a lot of times, and the way these things were designed um, was to work on 66 blocks. And this is a 66 block. I think I showed it to you in other videos. It's still used today in a lot of places, but you notice this is on an angle here. It has an angle to it, um, and that's so you can attach right here. Bring it into the camera thing, and it would attach right to that portion of the 66 block, and then this other one you would attach usually at the other direction. i get it in there. I think it's bent a little bit. No, it isn't. Always happens when you're doing live video. There you go. I'm going to go with that. Actually, there you go. So as you can see, it's, it, they're firmly connected. And this is not necessarily in the right place. It really needs to be right above it. So let's see if I can do that. Not take up too much of your interest. I don't remember ever having this much trouble with them. But that was years ago. I haven't used this probably in 5 or 10 years. But you will see them out there. So you notice, even though they're connected in there, that they are not touching each other. Very close, but they're not touching each other. Maybe you can't see that on the camera. There you go. Um, so that's that's why they were bent like they were, so you can fit them on a 66 block. That was the purpose of the, the bent. So with analog telephone, all you need is one pair, so two wires, and, uh, and then you could break into a line with that. These are also pretty cool. These are pretty new, and I don't know if you can see it in there. But this thing is called a bed of nails, right in there. And I guess you can't really see it that great. I'm hoping to get a better, more detailed picture, but you can. So what you could have done is you could put a wire right through there, and then you squeeze on this, and it breaks through the insulation of the wire. Do it both sides so you don't have to have a 66 block. You don't have to strip the wire and wrap it around here. 
or something like that, you just use those bed and nails. So uh, that's what I would always order on everything, including uh, tone generators, things like that. If you can get the bed and nails, you're doing great. But anyway, this is a, a butt set, and I just assume that it means butt in rather than it attaches to your belt, and, and as you walk, it beats your butt up. I don't know, <laughs> but it has a, a big clip here that you'd attach it to your belt and phone companies use this all the time or use it i bet you they still have them because they still have analog lines uh, and so this is uh, the thing it had an off on switch here uh, uh, and you could uh, turn it on and turn it off so you can connect it and not turn it on and then when you're ready to listen you could turn it on and you can call people with this you can call go right next to a, a person's house and plug this in if you wanted It'll, even though that's illegal and you can dial somewhere, you know, anywhere in the world uh, using this. And you can sit there and listen and talk. You can also mute. There's a mute button there to where you could listen in on a conversation. Mm, sounds kind of uh, not cool. And you also had a speaker button. So you could push down this speaker button here and it would come out the speaker. Also, if someone dialed in while you were on the butt set, let's say, and you weren't, um, you, you weren't listening or you didn't have it turned on, Right there, you could also hear the ringing. So that's not only a speakerphone, it's also a ringing. And they were pretty good. This was built really strong, made by Harris. I don't know if they're still around, Harris. Uh, but this was this was the one you, uh, you wanted if you were out in the field. This does a lot of cool things. You store some redial numbers up here also. And the reason you store those numbers is the phone company would have numbers that if you dialed, it would tell you the line you were on. So you could dial that number and it would identify the line for you and that's what you really needed. And it has a couple of those service numbers that, that if once you know it, you could do a lot of cool things with it. Uh, so this is a modern day butt set. Modern day or at least it's a, a butt set that this is the newest I had. I don't think there's any newer designs out there but these are really good. There was other designs that I had um, uh, before this and they were kind of nice. Uh, they held up really well and everything else but I no longer have them. I think they died or I gave them away or things like that. However, this is kind of a cool one. And this is a one that I owned since I was about 12 years old. I was walking down the street and as I'm walking down the street, I noticed it was in the street and I kind of knew at that time what it was because I would watch these telephone repair guys do work. And I was always interested in phone systems it was long before computers, and I was always interested in phone systems. So, um, you know, the phone guy, I'd watch what he'd do. I'd ask him questions even as a kid, and then after he left, I would take the phone, the phones apart in my house, things like that. And um, But this one I found on the street, and back then, you know, the only people that could legally own these things was AT&T. So this probably fell off an AT&T truck when I was something like 12 or 13. Now, since then... The phone system, uh, the phone network, uh, the um, uh, the IP network, everything else is now open. That uh, you know people can obviously uh, uh, own these things and legally own them, where back then you couldn't. And of course, as you notice, this is a dial, a dial system. And you know, even the word dial, we still use it today. When people say dial me, or I guess they don't say that very much, but use that phrase dial. And you would have uh, these different numbers, as you could see in here. And so if a number was, uh, you know, 515, you would just put your finger in the 5 area, and you would go back, and then the 1, and then the 1. And uh, that would give you 511 or any of the numbers you needed. And then if you notice, they have letters. And I guess they, they still have letters uh, on phones. I haven't really paid attention to my cell phone, but yes, they do have letters on the phones. And that originally started because of substations, uh, areas in a big city. And I remember uh, mine was Neptune 7 was my station that, that where I grew up. And so to dial Neptune 7, it would be NE7. But of course, that also meant N being 6, uh, E is 3. But sometimes that's an easy way to remember a number, NE7. I remember my girlfriend at the time, which later turned into be my wife, um, hers was Davenport, D-A, 
and people still use those back then and that was we're talking about back in the uh, 70s 70s 60s 50s things like that and this is probably from that time frame even though i found it probably mm, probably in the 60s is when i found it and it's it does the same function as this one of course it doesn't do pulse dialing i mean it doesn't do um, the, uh, dual tone multi-frequency tone dialing uh, that your even your cell phone uses that today um, sort of uses it we could go into details about that but that's not what this is about this is just a fun uh, a thing of teaching you a little bit about history if you notice the ends are different than the ends to the newer ones or the newer ones have that little slide in there Hopefully it will focus here. Uh, it keeps on going out of focus and focus, focus. There you go. You notice it has that little slot used for 66 blocks, where this one doesn't have that. It's just a clamp, an alligator clamp. And I imagine the reason why is when these were being designed, these older ones being designed, that uh, back then they used wire wrap. They didn't use punch down. They didn't use 66 blocks, things like that. They actually use wire wrap, and I remember going into an old, old buildings, um, uh, what would you call it, a phone room, they would call it back then, and it was a big building, and it was, t it was wire wrap, and I thought, wow, that's really strange. I've only seen it once, but these are the type of uh, uh, alligator clips that you would use on a wire wrap, and it's the same thing. It has a similar buttons. It has... A talk button there and it has a monitor button they call it monitor it's listening to a conversation without the person know you're listening of course this would go up against your ear and this would be what you would speak into and a really neat little system here uh, and again back then it was only only AT&T no one else was allowed to own these type of things but I got my hands on it and I tell you <laughs> I would break into the phone system of my house and I would listen to my uh, sister talk to her boyfriends when I was young and then I would use it against her. I would just hint that I knew something was going to happen um, over the weekend or, the, or, or a certain night. She was older than me. She was four years older than me. And so I could use that to, uh, uh, to pressure her, uh, you know, to... Uh, um, pay attention to me and not treat me like a, a, a little brother that was driving her nuts. I just recently told her that that I was doing that, and she just laughed her head off over that. <laughs> she didn't know. She, just, she couldn't figure out how I knew some details about her life, um, but I did, and um, and it was fun. So this is an old butt set. I bet you it still works. Um, it's kind of cool as rotary dial. Now, the difference between rotary dial and, um, and tone dial is tone dial is multi-frequency, uh, dual tone multi-frequency, DTMF. Um, that's by pushing these buttons, there'd be two tones that would come out, and the other side could identify the tones and identify it as to the buttons. Um, in this case, this type of dialing, what it would do is it would, it was pulse dialing, so it would quickly um, uh, dial the, you know, it would it would quickly break in and then and then connect. So it would go da 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 da, and the da 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 were the actual pulses. So it wasn't actually sending out pulses; it was actually shorting out uh, the uh, uh, the line, the connecting the line together with no, you know, with no resistance would create a short, and then letting it go quickly, doing that quickly. And I do remember one time, <laughs> I do remember one time, uh, I went to a, a payphone and the payphone dial was like this and it was smashed. And I had to get a hold of the operator. So all I did is I took the receiver, a little button at the top where you hang up the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the speaking part, that little, that little switch. I'd take that little switch and I would hammer it. Um, and you had to hammer it 10 times and then you'd get the operator back then. And the operator came online and I said, could you place this call for me? And she would say, well, you can place it yourself. And I'd say, no, the dial uh, pad was all messed up. I, I couldn't do it. And she goes, well, how did you get a hold of me? <laughs> I said, I tapped on the, uh, the switch, the receiver switch uh, 10 times. And that's how I got a hold of you. 
So there's a lot of neat history and when it comes to telephones and butt sets and things like that. Oh, you know, just one last device. Uh, always had one of these, and you can still use these today when, it, when you have a tone and probe. And um, this was a two-line. So uh, this line would be line one, and this would be line two. And what you would do is you would take, well, I guess you can do it with this, too. You would take this, and you would connect it here. And there and then you could uh, break into that line that's on that RJ11 this is an RJ14 actually but it also works with an RJ11 and uh, so you could break into line one on that uh, that RJ uh, system you know that mod plug that's on the wall so this is a mod plug on the wall would be a jack and so a uh, little bit of history thought you'd find that interesting a little bit of my history <laughs> uh, had a fun time with it sitting there sometimes in my bedroom with a bag of chips and just having the system on monitor and listen to the whole conversation uh, that my sister was having you know, all the tears and all the the headaches and everything else over her boyfriends and her girlfriends and all this other stuff I wasn't into any of that because I was still too young but anyway give you some information thought you'd find that interesting um, hope you find it interesting and thank you for watching I appreciate it and you have a great day please Give me a thumbs up and subscribe. You have a great day.